Hello, my dear friends. I'm Stanislav Shamayev, a licensed business immigration and corporate attorney in Miami, Florida. In today's video, we're going to be talking about some updates and very important updates in the immigration law. So stay tuned. Let's go. But before we proceed, please guys, subscribe to my YouTube channel and like this video if you want to know more updates and up-to-date news in the immigration field. Today we're going to be talking about something that's coming back, which was in the past, but there was a huge gap between the past events and today's update. So if you didn't know, and you probably didn't, before 2004, we had an option here in the US to get the visa stamped in your passport without actually going to the embassy. And that was applied to many types of visas. And it was very convenient because you didn't have to go through this consulate processing, scheduling the interview and waiting in the line and thinking maybe something goes wrong. Everything could be done here in the States. But after the 9-11 terrorist attack, this practice was discontinued. And since then, almost for 20 years, the only option was to go through the embassy and get your visa stamped. So 2023 is going to be different. This option is coming back as a pilot program and only for two types of visa, H-1B and L-1. And I think this is just great news because once this pilot program is on and fully operational, then we can slowly switch to all other visas to be stamped in your passport without leaving the US. And this program should be implemented until the end of 2023 as a pilot program. And depending on the result, the, we will see the change probably 2024. So nobody knows, but this is important to understand. Those of you who's getting H-1B visa or L-1 visa, you guys in a privileged position, you will be able to get renewals of your visas here in the US. That was update number one. Update number two, and it concerns the extension of time for the temporary green card or it's also called conditional green card is a green card for two years that needs to be extended or for which to become a temporary green card a 10-year green card we need to remove the conditions and this happens only in two types of situations number one when you marry a u.s citizen or u.s green card holder However, as you guys know, I don't do no family law. I don't do any asylum cases, deportation cases. I focus only on business, investment, and talent visas. So this part of the update is just for your educational purposes. The real thing comes in when we talk about EB-5 visa removal of condition. And you know that in EB-5 visa, we have to create 10 jobs or promise to create 10 jobs and that's how we get our temporary green card in order to remove those conditions we need to actually show to the uscis that we fulfilled our promises and created 10 jobs or uh, 10 vacancies for a particular business uh, be it a passive investment or active investment for that to happen we need to file another case and as of right now, the time frame for these cases is very, very long. So USCIS is aware of it and they are giving for both cases, the family and EB-5, additional 48 months of automatic extension for the temporary green card. Meaning you can travel, you can work, you can use all the goods here in the States. I think this is a good thing and a bad thing at the same time. Why is it a good thing? Well, because we don't have to deal with a lot of paperwork, with stress, what's going on, should go to the field office, I need to call immigration and things like that. So this is out of the picture. We file the paperwork, we have four years of uh, additional automatic uh, green card extension. However, it's a bad news because USCIS is actually giving us appeal to remove the symptoms not the disease itself right the disease is the backlog with uscis when they adjudicate the eb5 petitions 
So instead of actually going straight to the problem and fixing it, they are giving us a pill saying, hey, that's gonna help for a little bit, but the problem is not gonna be resolved. So I think this is the bad news in this respect because we do not expect any resolution of the time frame for EB-5 visa adjudication. I don't like it. I think we need to file more lawsuits to make USIS to do what they have to do, especially when we're talking about a million dollars investment in the US economy and creating jobs and creating jobs. I think this is something that uh, US government has to respect because people put actually a big money into this and they skin into this and we cannot make them wait for so long. And I hope that USIS is going to do something about it. And I'm going to bring this more up when we meet at AILA format, the organization that takes care of the immigrants and uh, who helps the immigrants to fight the US government. Okay, guys, but also let me give you a little bonus. If you want to come to the States on business visa, investment visa or talent visa, and talent visa is O1 EB1A or EB2 National Interest Waiver, you can always get a free evaluation of your case. You can always come back to this video and go to the description and find the proper link for the program that you think you qualify. You click on the link, you fill out the questionnaire, and within 48 hours, I will give you a free evaluation of your case and let you know if there is a perspective in your case, and then I will invite you to the immigration planning where I build a strategy for your case and already tell you how we're gonna go with the processes. Okay, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube, press the like button, also ask the questions and make a comment. I would love to see your feedback. Also subscribe to my Instagram and my TikTok. The links are gonna be below. I'm Stanislav Shamayev, a lawyer of the future. Your future begins here. Good luck.